For startups nowadays, thanks to rapidly improving technology, disruptive innovation has become an attractive path to an established industry. Disruptive innovation happens when a startup with limited resources challenges the major player or players in an industry. Amazon is a good early example that changed the traditional book selling, as is Netflix in the movie rentals and later TV industry. Disruption often happens through a new business model, such as online book selling for Amazon or online DVD rentals and then streaming for Netflix. Launching disruptive business models creates high uncertainty for both the disruptor and other participants. There are uncertainties about customer and partner needs, underlying technology, and long-term sustainability in case of response from competitors. As a consequence, the disruptor faces a challenge. How to gain support of ecosystem participants when uncertainty is so high? Several research streams explore how to reduce uncertainty. One stream describes how framing, or the process of constructing meaning that focuses audience attention, can help articulate specific versions of reality and secure stakeholder support. Second stream suggests that entrepreneurs can adapt their business model to better meet customer and partner needs. Studies suggest that experimentation can help. Yet, it is unclear how firms can effectively experiment with the business models while also framing their innovation in a convincing and consistent way. We ask, how does a disruptive business model innovator align framing and adaptation of its business model over the disruption process? We investigate the company Salesforce from its founding in 1999 to 2006 in the enterprise software industry. Salesforce was at the origin of the cloud ecosystem of software as a service. Through coding of historical information, analysis of existing literature, and broader conceptual reasoning about temporal and evolutionary dynamics, we develop a process model of business model disruption. We conceptualize the phenomenon of a disruptor's gambit. The disruptor reveals its innovation and disruptive intentions at the outset, sacrificing secrecy to create visibility and initiate relations with early adopters. This strategic gambit leaves the incumbent a choice. Either it responds acknowledging the challenger, the new business model and the emerging new ecosystem, or it refrains from doing so and loses the opportunity to participate in the new ecosystem. A fast response could potentially hinder the disruptor, but risks legitimizing the new business model. When there is no response, the disruptor strategic gambit initiates a virtuous framing adaptation cycle that generates ecosystem growth. Early support of media and analysts helps establish this virtuous cycle for the disruptor and the vicious one for the incumbent. Our work contributes three insights to the literature. First, we demonstrate the strengths of the disruptor's strategic gambit. Setting in motion a virtuous cycle, framing is blended with business model adaptation so that the disruptor promotes its novel technology and at the same time adjusts its business model to gain the support of the new ecosystem. Second, we deepen the understanding of how disruptors can apply framing strategically in sequences of distinctiveness and leadership frames to generate ecosystem growth. Third, we extend the organization level Bauer and Bergelman process model to the ecosystem level by applying Bauer and Bergelman process models logic of sequential and simultaneous actions at the ecosystem level. Although our research is based on one case and therefore does not guarantee generalizability, our insights provide managers insights about how to initiate disruption with a strategic gambit, what reactions to expect, as well as how the interactions with incumbent might play out.